house kids eric here today is saturday august 1st goodbye july hello august now it has been a couple weeks actually since we've done a video for you guys that the reason for that is last week we had the christmas in july event here at the church which was awesome it was all outdoors we had games crafts Robin put a cool puppet show on, which showed uh, and went over the story of, of Christmas, of Jesus being born as a human being here with us. So it was awesome. For those of you that made it, it was really cool to see you and hang out with you. And for those of you that didn't, and also for those of you who did, we are going to have another event similar to that. It's going to be at the end of August. Sunday, August 30th is when we're planning to do that. So pencil that in your calendars August 30th we're gonna have another event uh, I believe though that that week we're still gonna continue on with the lessons so there will be a video that Saturday unlike this last Saturday we didn't we were all focused on the event so boom 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 alright so where are we in the lesson we left off with Joseph if you recall God taking Joseph from his his troubled times he was in prison and all this and he took him out of that Put him into a position of power so that he could save his family, all right? And so here we are where his family ended up moving and relocating to Egypt and settling down there, all right? And remember, on the way, God spoke to Israel, Joseph's father, and told him, hey, I do want you to go to Egypt, but I'm letting you know in the future there will come a day where I'm going to take all of your people, my chosen people, and bring them back out of Egypt and uh, send them back to the land of Canaan, where I promised you to be. And so, uh, let's take that, because that's a promise from God, and hide that up in our little brains here, because we know that God's promises always come true, and we'll get to that part of the story in a little bit. So, Joseph and his people, they grow in number, and they get real, so many of them in the land of Egypt. They're very, they're doing very well, okay? And they're, they're now called the Israelites, and that's act, named after Joseph's father, Israel, who, remember, he was originally Jacob, and then he was Israel. So they're called the Israelites. Now, many, many years go by. Joseph dies. Israel already passed away shortly after they got there. And uh, even the Pharaoh, who knew Joseph well, and they were good friends, he passes away, and the new Pharaoh comes into the picture and into power. And this new Pharaoh notices that the uh, Israelites have grown very, very large. There's a lot of them. And he isn't like the other Pharaoh. He's a little bit more, how do you say, evil. So, he comes up with a plan. He's like, I don't want them getting too big. What if they try and take over us Egyptians? So he enslaves them. He, he has them as slaves, and they work them hard. And even though they work them hard in their slaves, the Israelites grow and grow and grow in number. And so the Pharaoh, the evil Pharaoh, says, that's not enough. We need to come up with a plan that's even more evil. And so he comes up with a plan to kill every newborn baby boy of the Israelites. <gasps> that is so evil! Because he's an evil Pharaoh. So, they do that. They start killing all these babies. And this is the part of the story where someone new comes in who God is going to use to save his people. Remember, God is just always saving us. He sent Jesus to save all of us. He, he saved Joseph and Joseph's family. He's just a big rescue mission, God, because he loves us all. So here we have... Um, this woman, who's an Israelite, and she's pregnant with a boy. She's from the tribe of Levi. She has this baby boy, and she's probably very scared because she knows that the Egyptians will kill her baby. So you know what she does? She makes a basket. She has a basket that floats in the water. She puts her baby in the basket, and she lets it float down the river. Now, I know you're thinking, why is she just letting her baby float down the river? The river, the Nile River wasn't just some river where you don't see people on it. Everyone goes to the river. They wash their clothes there. They get their water from there. It's just that's where they got all their water was in the river. So it was a busy river. 
And so she was thinking someone will end up seeing the baby, and if she keeps the baby, she know her lovely baby would die. And she thought maybe it would have a chance to live this way, right? Very brave of her. So the Pharaoh's daughter ends up down by the river, and she hears the baby kind of by the reeds on the side of the river. And she goes over and she sees the baby, and she's a woman, and we know that God created women in such an amazing way. They have this compassion, uh, which is amazing. It just comes from God, and she loves this baby. She doesn't want the baby to be harmed, so she takes the baby for her own to raise as her own son, and she names him Moses. That's right. This is Moses. This is the story of Moses and how he is born and what God does with Moses. So Moses grows up, right, a little bit as an Egyptian, even though he came from the Israelites. And one day, Moses sees an Egyptian, and he's just, keep in mind, the Egyptians are still, they have enslaved the uh, Israelites. And this Egyptian is just beating and whipping on some is poor Israelite. And Moses gets so angry that he kills the Egyptian. Okay, Moses, you went a little overboard there. It's good you're protecting him, but I don't know if you should have killed him. So anyways, a pharaoh gets, hears about it. Pharaoh gets mad, and Moses goes, I'm out of here. And he takes off. He books it, and he ends up in some, some place called Midian, right, outside of Egypt. And there he becomes a shepherd, and he has a wife, and he ends up having kids, and he ends up having a family there, right? So years have gone by. Meanwhile, all of the Israelites are still just worked hard by the Egyptians, and they are praying to God, as we all should every day. He's there, he's listening all the time, and they're crying out for help. Lord, please get us out of this. We're just abused, and we're just worked, and that's our life now. This is horrible. And God hears them, and God decides, I'm going to save them, and I'm going to use Moses. So, one day Moses was walking, and he sees this bush, and it's on fire. But if you look closely, the bush, Moses noticed, isn't burning up. I don't know what kind of bush this is. It doesn't specify. I don't know, you know if it has leaves or what. But if it did, the leaves weren't burning up. The branches weren't burning. It was still looking fine. Like it's not being burned, yet it's on fire. So that's strange. And God speaks to Moses through the burning bush. He says, Moses, Moses. Moses says, I'm here. And then God says to Moses, stop right there. Don't come any closer. This is holy ground that you're standing on. That's because God is there. God's speaking to him. He says, take your sandals off. And so Moses takes his sandals off. And God says to Moses, I've been listening to my people cry out for help in Egypt. And I'm going to send you to rescue them. Moses is like, uh, I think you got the wrong guy. I, I don't think that, I mean, what if, he starts doubting himself and doubting in God. He says, well, what if they ask me your name? What if they're like, really? Really? He sent you? What's, what's God's name? What do I say then? God's, God tells him, you tell him, I am who I am. You tell him, I am sent you. And he's like, oh, okay, all right. Um, I don't know, what if they still don't believe me? So Moses is totally doubting God still. And God says, look, I am the God who created everything. I can do anything within my own, within my own character. We've been learning that with God. So God says, I will give them miraculous signs, and they will know that I am with you. Take your staff and throw it on the ground. So Moses takes his staff, he throws it on the ground, turns into a snake. Moses is like, oh my goodness. And, and uh, God says to him, grab it by the tail. And I just picture Moses being like, Whoa. as soon as he grabs it by the tail, turns back into a staff. It's amazing. It's miraculous. And then God says, okay, now why don't you put your hand in your cloak, which is like his outer clothing. He puts his hand in there. And when he pulls it out, it's like diseased. He's got a diseased hand. And he's like, oh, no. What happened? God said, put your hand back in the cloak. And he does. When he takes it out, 
it's healed. And God says, look, and if those aren't enough miraculous signs, I can have you take a cup of water from the Nile River, throw it on the ground, and it will become blood. So all these miraculous signs, he's like, I will show them I'm with you. And Moses says, yeah, I don't, I don't know, God, if uh, you have the right person. I don't, I'm not very good at speaking. You see, real quick, Moses, he had a speech problem. I don't know if he stuttered or what his speech problem was, but he had a little bit of a speech problem. And so he probably felt bad about that. And he thought, oh, I can't speak in front of people. So he's like, God, I have a speech speech problem and uh, I can't, you probably have the wrong, you should get someone else. <laughs> God's getting frustrated and God says, Moses, I created you exactly how you are. If I didn't want you to do this or I didn't think you could, I wouldn't tell you to do this. I need you to go and rescue my people. Now if you want, your brother Aaron, he's coming here shortly, you can have him go along with you and help you. And so Moses agrees, and Moses and Aaron, his brother, go to Egypt. And that's where this part of the story ends, you see. And so in this story, we have God coming in into his, uh, to rescue his people, as he usually does. And we have Moses, who is doubting God and not trusting in God. How many times through the Old Testament so far? I mean, we just finished Genesis with Joseph. Now we're starting the book of Exodus, where Moses begins. And through all this so far, it's just so much doubting in God. And God is right there. He's not trusting in God. And you'd think, that's the God who created everything. If he's asking you to do something, I'm sure you're going to be fine. God's there. He has your back. Right? So that's this story. It's a story of Moses, how he was born, and how he was called by God to go do some of God's work and rescue God's people. Next week, we'll get into Moses and how he begins that mission rescuing God's people. So, good story. Look at the craft that Robin has for you. Look at this. How cool is this? It is, you get a paper plate, and she'll have in the video below, there'll be a link below in the description. Click on it, and it'll go to Robin's YouTube little page where she shows you how to make this. And I don't know if you can see this. It's adorable. There's little baby Moses floating through the reeds in the river. And she put up here, God had a plan for Moses. God has a plan for you, and he does. Our plan, most likely, isn't saving the Israelites, obviously, but every one of us is different, and God has a plan for all of us. In the Dropbox below, you're also going to find, in the link to the Dropbox below, you're going to find these right here, and these are what you're going to need for that craft, along with probably a couple other supplies. I see a plate on there and some other things, so you can print these out from the Dropbox to do that craft. And I also have a couple sheets for you. Uh, the coloring sheet for the week says, God called Moses to deliver his people from captivity. Right? And here's the burning bush. So you have a lot of, uh, be real creative on what that fire looks like uh, there on that. And then the activity sheet is very easy. All of you can do this. This one's not difficult. Just connect the dots. And look at cute little baby Moses in the, uh, the little basket. And you're going to connect with a line from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. So this is simple because, look, it's just kind of a big line all the way around. But if you're working on your numbers, this is good for you. You can count all the way to 20. So that's the activity sheet. So that is it for this week. Again, the Bible story video, the animated one, is also in the Dropbox below. So you can watch that. And that is on this story as well. So hope you guys are doing well. I can't wait for next week when we get more into Moses. You guys have a great week, and I will see you later. Take it easy. Let's go. Let's go.